What's up, everybody? It's your boy. <laughs> it's your boy, Hitty, to give you guys the review for Love Hip Hop Hollywood. Right quick, excuse this. This is a part of, you know, my life fixture. I ain't have time to say him. Move the shit around. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it starts on Ray J. He's back. He says he's back to make stacks and babies. Now, he is saying that, um, you know, he mentions that, you well, somebody had mentioned something about he needs to stop smoking because, you know, they apparently cannot get pregnant. And, you know, smoking cigarettes can reduce the sperm count. So he feels that he should probably go in and get that, like, figured out what his sperm count is and then recommends to the guys, hey, we all should fucking do it. Fucking weird. Fucking weird. And the shade of it all is whoever <laughs> loses, I guess has the lowest, has to put Hazel E on the track. I was sitting here like, that shit is gonna blow up on the fucking reunion. And I probably should check Twitter because that shit probably, <laughs> that shit was funny though, but again, like, look, I'm a free spirit, but that's in the realm of shit that I just won't do. And, okay, if I said that the shit kind of, you know, all right. So, so A1 said he cranked out seven hits. I don't know which ones they is. No shade. Like I said, I ain't been listening to a lot of current shit. So, my B, I don't fucking know. Y'all let me know. And he says that um he won't start his own label. We'll see that. I think probably, probably not this episode. Maybe like the next episode. He also mentions that he and Lyrica are still, well, I guess he's still wearing a condom. And they're freaking out about it, but she's worried about her career. And here's the thing, like, I'm actually not against that. I think that she should also be on birth control just to kind of, like, double make sure, like, nothing happens. But, hey, you know, I can't be mad at her for wanting to sit here and, you know, put a career first. Just hopefully she doesn't wait too long and kind of, you know, misses out and can't have a baby. Brooke is talking to Booby, you know. I mean... Like I said, they, they, they go back, so they know each other. She pretty much saying she don't want to give up on her dude, but we can see from the previews that they going to sit here and someone link up, and also for the whole A1, Safari, and Ray J doing the sperm thing, by the previews, I think we all can conclude that Safari won, that I'm just saying. Still is the weirdest fucking thing. Um, <clears throat> Moniz Cam, Cameron being her son, AD, her girlfriend, Zell, Masika, and Nia, who, all right, they all on the beach. Um, Moniz had pretty much explained, like, the way that she has explained her relationship to Cameron is, you know, she likes to wear her Jordans, her shorts, this and her. Mommy likes to wear her sandals, her dresses, and pretty much say they're roommates, which, eh, I mean, I can deal with that. My whole thing is, have she decide that she want to sit here and, you know, discuss that with her child. Hey, that's on her. They don't mean. But Zell brings up Alexis to Masika. Masika, like, I don't want to get no shine. Nana. And she's going to do that the whole entire season. Again, my thing is, you don't necessarily have to give a shot, but you just be like, next topic, next topic. But being so angry about it, and it's just doing too much. And you're giving this more life than what it needs. So, yeah. Uh, all right, look. They say it's gonna be a death of me. It's not. It's not. All right, so Marcus is talking with uh Brooke and pretty much telling her that look, he's gonna <clears throat> make things right. And his whole thing is the reason that he didn't tell her about the divorce thing because he thought it was already over when he found out that it wasn't. He thought that he'll be able to fix it before she found out. I can give him a pass on that, but again, ain't really none of my fucking business, so I really don't care. He gives her, I guess, a copy of the divorce papers, but just because they're signed does not mean the shit's already sent in. But okay, all right. Mona gonna feed us whatever the fuck she think that it's okay to fucking feed us, whatever. <clears throat> Markeisha, Kishiko cousin. So Kishiko, her cousin, meet up with 2 Chain. Look, long story short, he told her, take care of the baby, get your paper, and now she feels that she has to have the talk. With booby, all right. Look, real talk. Look, I ain't finna be doing this whole Keisha Cole booby bullshit. For I ain't got look, look. Even though I start reviewing, but I ain't finna shit. Look, we not finna do a real households of Potomac, fucking Robin and want. I ain't doing that. I I'll give fuck. I'll give fuck. Anyway, so the guys, Ferrari, Ray J, 
and A1. So they going to do the, the sperm thing. A1 bring in Lyrica. I guess help him out. She said, oh, he told me he was saying me to a dinner day. She found out what it is. He, and she was like, yeah, he said he was going to feed me. That shit was the funniest part. They looking like, oh, he going to feed you. That's so right. Again, the shit's still fucking nasty. Like, three guys. I, I can't. But anyway, she going to go and help her dude out. It is what the fuck it is. <clears throat> so, Zell <clears throat> meets up with. Alexis, because, you know, he feel, okay, she's, I guess, someone a real bitch since she uh wants to address the issue, whatever. Reality is he just want to get the tea. All right? I mean, he could be fucking up front about the shit. <clears throat> Alexis, her, her whole thing is, I know he's messy, but if he can, can get me in a room with, you know, Hoseika, then whatever. And the fact that she calls her Hoseika and Zill doesn't check her about that makes me question, you know, the uh, genuineness of their friendship. But he's going to do it. So I'm guessing this is going to be his way to kind of like solidify himself on the show. Again, I don't know if being messy is the way to do it. But hey, hey, do what you do, bro. Do what you do. <clears throat> so Chanel, or Chanel West Coast, I'm just calling Chanel. I ain't got time for all this extra shit. Is a rapper, singer, and dancer. She knows Nikki. Nikki knows her. But Nikki didn't know she did music, which is plausible but I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Whatever. We we gonna run with it. We're gonna run with it. She says she was attached to Young Money. They said that we walked the woo. So nigga gonna help try to put it on. We gonna see. And we know later on down last year we working with Hazel Lee. So we whatever. And then we see Jay. Jay was reintroduced to us because she was on New York, fucking around with Rich, and of course she got mad that Moniz came and you know, I guess fucked that up. So she mentioned that she's Seeing someone who's married but not really married, she's a paralegal, help him go through that. One thing led to another, and that's where they are. <clears throat> and I don't, and I think the girls know because I, I forget who gonna bring it to her, but they know that Marcus is fucking around with Brooke. So it's like, okay, they're gonna sit here and hold on to that. So I guess they're, but of course, their loyalty is to Brooke. So of course, you don't sit here and let the other one know. So it's going to get broke to Brooke, and I just hope and pray that Brooke don't do the fucked up thing and go address the woman. Like, keep it on him. Keep it on him. I want to see more of her singing and not necessarily just doing this because, again, if you if this is your bullshit-ass storyline, you know, shit, I'm going to rock with it. But what I need from you, Brooke, is use this. Sing your ass for every chance you get. Your ass need, you don't need to be like your ass need to be somewhere blowing, giving fucking vocals, run, vibrato, and riffs, all that shit. Just so motherfuckers know your ass ain't playing. And also be singing snippets of songs that you already have recorded for your coming out. Try to throw your bone here, baby. Make this quick. <clears throat> Keisha talks to Booby. They gonna sign them papers. That's it. Most shit happened. I don't. I told y'all. I don't give a fuck. Moving on. Safari and Nikki sit down. She brings uh, Chanel. So I totally forgot about this. I totally forgot about this. So she's gonna pimp. She's gonna put Chanel <clears throat> in line with Safari and Hazel. So we're gonna see how that's gonna work out. But he's uh gonna host an event. It's gonna have a stage over. So she wanna perform some. She can and kind of I guess show what she can really do. So we gonna see what comes of that. Look, y'all, I like I probably should have forewarned y'all. I'm tired as fuck. I've been up all day and I'm trying to decide if I don't watch this two hour season finale of fucking daytime divas because like I said, I'm tired of shit. And I gotta be like I wake up every morning at five, probably gotta wake up earlier because I gotta get ready for the damn PT session that I'm gonna like send my fucking league. I gotta make sure that there's a lot of shit I gotta do. I'm tired as fuck. We gonna see y'all. We gonna see All right, so Nia, Brooke, and Lyrica go dance class. Now, Brooke is telling the girls how the shit happened with Marcus, how she found out via the mama that he wasn't, you know, fully divorced and everything, but he didn't make steps, brought the papers, boop, wop, the boop, so they good. Can we get a hand clap? Let me get that hand clap. Let me get that hand clap. And Lyrica was like, nah, because I was at this party for Chanel West, and apparently she had a friend named Jade. Jade is apparently supposed to be having this motherfucking married man. 
you know, get divorced and the parents, she's sleeping with said married man, and happened to be your man. And they like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Then me is say, well, I heard that Safari is having an event that Chanel, you see how all this shit intertwined. Mona did it. But Chanel was going to be performing because Brooke wants to have a conversation with her. The girl's kind of looking like, wait, wait, wait. But Brooke's whole thing is, I need to get all the facts so when I go talk to him, I'm good. And I'm hoping that's all that it is. If not, well, fuck, it's about to be a what? Girl fight. <laughs> and the boys, A1 Safari and uh, Ray J, go and uh, get their results. I was off, but I can see what happened. So A1 had the highest sperm count. Safari was second. Which was like, he was like, yes, yes, uh, because the, he don't have to do the track with uh, Hazel Lee. And Ray J was told that his sperm count is 9 million. Normal is 15. So they're going to try to put him on some medication. I was told him <clears throat> he needs to um, do some health style changes and whatnot. And all of that's right. But I'm also going to say real talk. When the time is right, the time is right. And it will happen. I mean, like real talk. When the time is right. It will happen, and they, you know, just let everything work in its own time. And even though they've been together for a while, they probably should focus on being married for a couple of years before bringing the baby into it, especially knowing their tumultuous past. But I'm on the outside looking in, ain't none of my business. Okay, the closest out. Zell meets with Masika. and she even said, I can tell by the look at your face that it's about to be some shit. You're about to say something. He mentions Alexis's name, and she pretty much goes ape shit. Now, her whole thing is, <clears throat> I'm already a reality star. She's trying to get put on. Okay, got that. And she even says, too, I'm like, if you really wanted to come at me about this, then you would have came to me off camera. So she's saying, take off my mic, give me my phone. She's mad because her whole thing is, okay, y'all are really trying to have a scene. And I'm under the imp impression that maybe Alexis was en route and she knew that. Now, <clears throat> before I say my piece, he started to read and talking about a motherfucking hills that third, you ain't got no budget. Uh, I think he even said that he had a, a bitch that could handle her and all this other stuff. And I'm like, so y'all friends and how we get here. Of course, we know they're going to make up because they have a scene later on in the season. What I will say is, <clears throat> he keeps saying, well, I had a bag and a drink thrown in my face at third, but here's the reality. Again, there's a way you can sit here and pay a motherfucker who complete does because he didn't have to say shit to her. So, bro, you chose to address Alexis. And the price of you doing that, say, you know, I read bad bitches and all the other shit, your mouth got the drink and shit and the fucking bag thrown at you. Not to say that it was right, but don't sit here and put that off on her like it was her fault. Because it kind of wasn't. That shit happened. It is what the fuck it is. This is why Masika... And again, like I said, all Masika had to do, all she had to do is just sit there and be cute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who? And sit here and fucking steer that a different direction. Better yet, hey, Masika, that's what you do. Holler at Matthew Knowles, get enrolled in his class on how to sit here and deflect shit, this, that, and third. You're going to be A-OK. -okay. But that's all I got. Thank you guys so much for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I'm going to try to sit up and watch the basketball holes and daytime vivas. It may not happen. I'm tired of shit. And I still got fucking laundry to fold. But we'll see. I ain't doing no fucking reviews, though. So, yeah, holla. Peace. I'm out.